As far back as I can remember, I've always had the issue of shaky aim. And you might have that too. You decide to search on YouTube and you get greeted by a ton of people telling you to just relax your hand or change something completely unrelated like grip styles. Welcome in and let's provide you with the real solution. Number one is that you're lacking something. Chances are you're here because you're early on in your Kovacs journey and you can't figure out what's causing the shakes. Well, it's gonna sound boring, but the real answer for most of you is simply that you lack the skill. As I'm coaching people, this is the most common thing I see by far. People will just wrongly identify their mistakes. See, you're not shaking because you have shaky aim. You do so as a compensation for not knowing how to properly track. So you lack overall tracking, but can we pinpoint the exact skill that can help this? Yes, it's most likely speed matching. That is the ability to match the speed of the bot correctly and is one of the most underutilized categories in Kovacs. To understand why this is happening, let's take a look at what the body is doing. See, your body isn't able to keep up with these fast movements, so you shake and hope you hit something. The brain is smart and knows it's got to get on target, but doesn't have the motor skill to do so yet. So what does it do? It compensates for your lack of skill by shaking. It's sort of like going on a full auto spray everywhere instead of tapping accurately. But that's the boring answer and I have to get it out of the way. Number two is for those people who played a lot of reactive and in game you just mess up because of it. First of all, if this is happening to you, you want to tone down the difficulty of your reactive by a lot. More so, after you're doing your reactive, you want to do scenarios that seem abruptly easy, like very easy smoothness. This works because it gives our hand the opportunity to relax after the intensity. You're sort of telling your brain, this isn't a challenge, calm down. And it becomes even more powerful when you combine it with something called reactive conditioning, which is essentially playing easy smoothness for three runs, followed by a reactive scenario for another three runs. That way you're telling your brain to calm down before playing this slightly harder scenario. Sia is one of those things that came together through hard work, discussing for long hours in a thoroughly tested method. And I want to take this time to explain what it is and why some people are having a hard time. If you didn't know, SIA or Smooth Your Aim is a technique we created to drastically make improvements in your aim. Essentially, you're doing a scenario for 75% of its original speed and right after you're doing the same scenario with normal speed. This works amazingly for people who lack overall skill because you're essentially showing your brain perfect technique and then executing it. Some people, however, are struggling and if that's you, this is what you should be doing. Scenario number one, the timescale version you play needs to be very easy for you. Forget about the stack it needs to look clean. It's not an accuracy stat you should focus on, it's having fluidity. You should feel that your aim isn't being challenged. Likewise, for scenario number two, it cannot be too difficult. That way we're setting up our brain for failure. So in short, instead of playing at a 75% time scale, you have to make it even slower. 60%, 50% of the scenario's original speed or just choose another scenario that's way too easier. TLDR, if that was confusing, just make the whole thing way easier. That way we'll build up some skill to get rid of that shaky aim. Rethinking this script, I realized this one should have probably been number one, but I'm too lazy. Region scenarios are perfect for shaky aim since they force perfection and punish mistakes. These are the absolute most realistic scenarios in aim trainers, and they essentially work the part of your aim that's responsible for gluing your mouse to a singular part of the enemy. These work so well because in game, you're being punished for missing since the other guy is more perfect with his aim. But in Kovacs, there's nobody here to spank you when you mess up. So you feel no pressure to perform or force the perfection required to get a kill. See, we underestimate how good our enemies actually are. Combined with netcode and all the other bullshit we have in game, we need to be perfect. This way of forcing perfection and more importantly, forcing you to constantly stay on the bot or it gets back its health shows the brain that perfection is needed to earn the kill. From a shaking perspective, well, you can't shake and get a kill since it regenerates its health. So essentially, it doesn't reward your brain forcing you to adapt and overcome. You're on the market for mice and you see all these popular YouTubers recommending the smallest possible mice for your giga chat hands. That might not be the best option for you. If you have medium to large hands and you have shaky aim, it might be because your mouse is just too small, specifically the width of the mouse which is responsible for detention management. I want you to imagine you're holding a pen. 
one is massive and the other one is extremely small. The bigger one, your text will be all messed up since you can't accurately make the minuscule adjustments. And the small pen will just shake because it's way harder to control. Don't believe me? Try pushing your thumb and pinky together as hard as you can and see how you'll shake. These are the primary fingers used in the mouse. So hands over 19 by 10 may consider getting medium mice instead of tiny ones. And maybe that'll help alleviate some pressure and get rid of your shaky aim. Chances are you're slouched up right now. You're sitting in a bad posture and just overall unsure on how to sit. Well, it might actually be the cause to why you have shaky aim. The first thing I want you to do is look at the top of your screen. This forces your chest up and your shoulders back. Hold that posture and bring your eyes to the middle of the screen. I know it might be hard at first, but get in the habit and it'll be second nature. Secondly, and what will help you more with the shakiness is to refocus where the tension is placed. Right now, it might be in your shoulder, fingers, or even forearm, but we want that tension away from our bodies. Try pushing your wrists into the desk like so. This works great since you're essentially alleviating pressure from other places and pushing all that energy into the desk. That energy has to go somewhere, right? So by pushing it into the desk, you're removing that stress from the rest of your body. Here you are, pushing speed, trying to flick faster and be better than you were the day before. We've all been there and it's actually great that you're pushing yourself and forcing improvements and change. The issue is that you might be getting ahead of yourself. You want to improve, but you're slapping on too much weight on the bar right now. You're pushing your hand too fast, which causes you to abruptly stop. This means that all your muscles, all the way up to your chest, gets activated in order to bring your mouse to a full stop, and you're not used to that, and it's going to shake a lot. That's going to cause shaking, a lot of it. See, speed is a funny thing because it's less about a skill and more about a habit you have to get used to. This is an important change to your mentality because it allows us to imagine our flicking speed in terms of percentiles. So instead of thinking, I'm going fast, ask yourself, how much faster out of your comfort are you really going? The issue of shaking at the end of our flicks can be solved quite easily by simply slowing down 5 to 10% of your flicks. If that doesn't get rid of it, slow it down by another 5% until it's all gone and you're still pushing yourself. Note that some amount of shaking is okay and it will get better with time. Hope you guys enjoyed. Consider joining my Discord and signing up for my coaching if you like this sort of analysis. We have a great community that allows you to speak your mind, discuss whatever you want to discuss, and more so, we have resources, quizzes, and challenges to keep you preoccupied. Done.